everybody. Welcome back to Sunday School. I'm a little bit annoyed. Hmm. There's been some very naughty behaviour in this house. Let me show you what's been happening. Okay, so this is the thing. Here's Taffy. Are you going to say hi, Taffy? There we go. Okay, and here is his little bit bigger sister, Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Um, and they are hiding out in the living room at the moment. Um, and they're hiding out in the living room because, excuse the untidy house of this one. This is Poppy. Poppy, are you going to look at the camera? No, you just want to go outside, don't you? Now, Poppy is a lot older than them and she's been a big grumpy pants today, haven't you? Yes, she's not played nicely and she has been hissing at her little brother and sister. What am I going to do with them? Oh. Can you see, Poppy promised that she was going to play nicely. Just because they're a bit younger and they get a bit bouncy, I told her she had to stop being grumpy and she promised she was going to stop being grumpy. Don't you hate it when people don't keep their promises? That happened to Joseph. Remember we were talking about Joseph? We talked last week about how he had this special coat from his dad that had lots of bright colours and that made his brothers jealous. And they were so jealous that they ended up selling him as a slave to a group of people who were on their way into a country called Egypt, which was near where the Israelites lived. The next bit of the story then is that Joseph ends up in Egypt being sold to a man called Potiphar. So he was sold to Potiphar to be a slave. Now, Potiphar was the captain of the palace guard. He was in charge of the guards that protected the king. And in Egypt, the king was called Pharaoh. So Potiphar was a very important man and he would be at the palace working hard. Joseph was so good at being a slave that Potiphar was really impressed with him and he put him in charge of the whole household. Potiphar really trusted Joseph. Now, Potiphar had a wife and she was probably a bit bored because her husband was at work all day but she was also a little bit naughty and one day she went up to Joseph when they were alone in a room together and she went oh Joseph I really like you do you want to kissy kissy and Joseph went no you're you're married to Potiphar you're you're married to my boss and my boss trusts me and I'm not going to do anything like that and Mrs. Potiphar was, yeah. Then a couple of days later, Mrs. Potiphar goes up to Joseph and she grabs onto his cloak and she goes, oh, come on, Joseph. You know you like me. Do you want to do kissy kissy? And Joseph was like, no, get away from me. And he ran off. But he had to kind of get himself out of the cloak to be able to run off. So Mrs. Potiphar was holding onto his cloak. When Mr. Potiphar came home, his wife came up to him. Oh, you'll never guess what happened. Look, Joseph attacked me. He grabbed onto me and he said, I want kissy kissy with you. And I said, no, I'm married. I can't do that. And I had to fight him off. And while we were fighting, I held onto his cloak and he ran away. And Potiphar was angry. How dare you betray my trust like that, Joseph? And he threw Joseph into prison. Well, Joseph didn't deserve that, did he? And Joseph was trying to do the right thing. But Mrs. Potiphar lied. She was a very naughty lady. And then the next part of the story gets really interesting. Ooh, what was that? 
Oh, I know. That was to tell us that the next bit of the story involves dreams. Mm. Let's hear what that bit of the story tells us. OK, so here's the story. In the same way that Joseph did really well when he was looking after things in Potiphar's house, Joseph actually showed himself to be really useful while he was in prison. And in fact, the prison guard had him doing little jobs for him. Now, one day, Pharaoh, that's the king, Pharaoh's butler, also called his cupbearer, and his baker got thrown into prison because they, they kind of annoyed Pharaoh a bit. Anyway, the captain of the jail put Joseph in charge of looking after the cupbearer and the baker. In the morning, Joseph saw the cupbearer and the baker looking really sad. He asked them why. They both said that they had had strange dreams the night before, but nobody could tell them what they meant. Only God can tell you what dreams mean, said Joseph. You tell me what they were, and with his help, I can tell you. The cupbearer went first. In my dream, he said, I saw a grapevine. It had three branches, and those branches grew buds, which turned into flowers, and then into grapes that ripened. I squeezed the juice of the grapes into Pharaoh's cup and put the cup into his hand. Joseph said, the three branches equal three days. In three days, Pharaoh will take you back to your old job and you will serve him the way you always did. But remember me, tell Pharaoh about me. I haven't done anything wrong. I was brought to Egypt as a slave. When the baker heard that the cupbearer's dream meant good news, he told Joseph his dream too. In my dream, he said, I had three baskets on my head. In the top basket was all kinds of nice sweet pastries that Pharaoh likes to eat. But the birds came and ate the pastries out of the basket. Joseph told him, the three baskets equal three days. In three days' time, Pharaoh will have you executed for what you have done. Three days later, it was Pharaoh's birthday, and he held a party for all his servants. He brought the chief cupbearer and chief baker out of prison. He gave the chief cupbearer his old job back. But he had the chief baker taken away to be executed. The dreams came true, just as Joseph said, but the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph and he forgot to talk to Pharaoh about him. Gosh, they were weird dreams, weren't they? Do you have weird dreams? I had a dream once that I was eating a giant marshmallow. When I woke up, my pillow had gone. wonder what that was about. Oh, shall we read some of the Bible verses together? Yes, let's do that. So we're reading from Genesis chapter 40, verses 5 to 15. While they were in prison, Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker each had a dream one night, and each dream had its own meaning. When Joseph saw them the next morning, he noticed that they both looked upset. Why do you look so worried today? He asked them. And they replied, we both had dreams last night, but no one can tell us what they mean. Interpreting dreams is God's business, Joseph replied. Go ahead and tell me your dreams. So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream first. In my dream, he said, I saw a grapevine in front of me. The vine had three branches that began to bud and blossom, and soon it produced clusters of ripe grapes. I was holding Pharaoh's wine cup in my hand, so I took a cluster of grapes and squeezed the juice into the cup. Then I placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. 
This is what the dream means, Joseph said. The three branches represent three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift you up and restore you to your position as his chief cupbearer. And please remember me, and do me a favour when things go well for you. Mention me to Pharaoh, so he might let me out of this place. For I was kidnapped from my homeland, the land of the Hebrews, and now I'm here in prison, but I did nothing to deserve it. So, Pharaoh's cupbearer didn't keep his promise. He promised Joseph that when Pharaoh took him back, that he would tell Pharaoh that it was all wrong that Joseph was in prison and, and he shouldn't be there. But I guess he got back and he was so pleased to be back in the palace and everything was going well that he kind of, well, he forgot about it, didn't he? And so Joseph had to stay in prison longer. And I guess that made Joseph quite upset, didn't it? And you see, that's the thing about breaking promises. You break promises and people get upset. The other person can get upset, but sometimes we get upset because we feel guilty that we've broken our promises. What sort of promises do we break? Maybe we break the promise of, I promise I'm going to clean my bedroom. Maybe we break the promise of, I promise I'll keep that a secret. Maybe we break the promise of, I promise I'll play nicely with my younger brother and sister, Poppy. The thing is, sometimes the promises we make feel to us something really small. So when we don't keep them, we don't think it's a big deal. But it can be a big deal for the other person. It can upset them quite a bit. I have a challenge for you. Now you've got to ask your parents first, but what I want you to do is get an egg, an egg from the fridge, okay? Not one that's been cooked, but a raw egg. And I want you to look after that egg for a whole day and make sure it doesn't get broken. Okay, look after that egg for a whole day and what you'll find out is it's difficult. It's difficult to keep that egg safe and stop it breaking. And that's what it's like trying to keep a promise. It can be difficult not to break it. And when things are difficult, what we need is help, isn't it? And we know as Christians, as people who follow God, who follow Jesus, that we can ask God for help to keep our promises. Because when you read the Bible, and we're going to obviously each week learn more and more and more about the Bible, but when you read the Bible, what you find is all the way through the Bible, God makes promises to us. And God is the best promise keeper in the world. He's kept all his promises. So he's the best person to ask for help, isn't he? Because he's just so awesome at keeping promises. So remember that when you make a promise to somebody, we know it's not easy to keep that promise. But you can say in your prayers to God, you can ask for help. In fact, why don't we do that now? Why don't we say a special prayer about our promises? Now, ideally, Poppy should join in, shouldn't she? But she's still showing off in the other room. So maybe Poppy and I'll say a, a different prayer later on. But you and I can pray together now, can't we? So let's say a prayer, okay? Dear God, the first thing we want to say is a big, big thank you to you because you keep all your promises. And each week, as we learn more about the Bible, we're going to learn those promises. So thank you, because they're all promises to do good things for us. And we thank you for that. 
We want to say sorry for when we break promises. And we want to say, can you help us? Because sometimes it's a bit difficult keeping a promise. And we know that you're going to be the best help ever. So, Lord, we ask you to help us keep our promises so that we don't make other people upset and we don't make ourselves upset. Thank you for everything you do for us. You are absolutely, truly amazing, God. We love you. Amen. So you've got your egg challenge, but also up on Facebook, there's going to be a Joseph in prison, spot the difference, right? It's coming up on your screen now. When you look at the Facebook page, there will be two versions of it. The second one is the one with the answers on. Don't look at that one first. Do the one without the answers on. And then once you finish, you can check whether you've spotted all the differences. So that's something for you to do in the week as well. So this week... Whatever you're doing, just be aware of when you make a promise. And if you think that's going to be a difficult promise to keep, then you say a prayer, quick prayer to God. Help me keep this promise. And then next week, we're going to learn about what happened when Joseph did get out of prison. The next bit of the story. So don't forget to come back and I'll see you then. And hopefully... Poppy won't be so grumpy by then. Bye!